Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to this spooky season of Halloween! My personal favorite and hopefully yours as well. If you are here, you are probably a spooky lover as well. Fan of the dark and mysterious and fatally tragic, maybe? Our how-to manual on creating cults. So Wired recently came out with a video on cults and I don't know about you, but I find cults semi-fascinating. What is also interesting is that Halloween will mark the two-year anniversary of a video, not a video, an article that I wrote. Not an article either, a whole big like half a semester long research paper that I did on LuLaRoe. Was several things that are a little cult-like, like the the, the cruises, the celebrity, the sisterhood, the empowerment. They actually call it out a little teensy bit in the video. So I was thinking it would be really fun to watch the Wired video with you guys. So our doctor here actually adds their own little bullet point onto the three infamous ones of what makes a cult in the first place. And so I thought I would share all of my thoughts with you guys today. I feel like I am butchering this, so why can I not talk today? So what is very interesting is that in my LuLaRoe research, what I found was that there are three distinct criteria in forming a cult. If you want to find one or create one, I guess. Um, but don't, that's bad. Anyways, so the Wired video that I found very, very fascinating with the doctor sociologist, they actually add on their own fourth bullet point onto this list of criteria. And so I thought overall, it would be very interesting to talk about. Let's dig right in into the original three by Robert J. Lifton, medical doctor. If you're curious to read Dr. Lifton's cult formation, I will share the link down below so you can check it out for yourself. Dr. Lifton's famous three bullet points can be found within the first two sentences of his abstract here, so if I may read for us today. Cults represent one aspect of a worldwide epidemic of ideological totalism or fundamentalism. They tend to be associated with a charismatic leader, thought reform, and exploitation of members. Charismatic leader, number one, from the get-go. Let me write this down. Our how-to manual on creating cults. Cultivate, if you will, the human people. I am very excited to get into this. While writing it down, I really honed in on one very specific person. And that might not be for me to blame. I hear he's grown older and past this. Maybe you'll tell me differently. But, in the past, a certain Paul brother, who knows which one. So when you have a charismatic leader, let's say with a YouTube channel, he could definitely hone in and cultivate a number of followers and subscribers and whatever you will on all of the platforms. So first step, you have your human being. So where do you go from there? Thought reform. This is a very dangerous next step because anything this guy says to any sort of level so susceptible human people, um, they will kind of take it as truth. Oh my god, you're a level 7 susceptible. A what? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Uh, uh, Rick, whatever that is, you can tell me. I'm on board. And they will just say, ah, 
you have completely changed my ideals and perspective on this one subject. Often, sometimes this can be something people know nothing about. Like, hey, did you know all of this stuff is happening? No, I had no idea. That's terrible. Please, tell me more about your cause. And it's, it's not a cause, it's a cult. You know those, those ones? I feel like I'm talking pretty harshly, but it's the spooky season. We're talking about spooky things here. So, step number three to making our cult. What is it? Exploitation of members. Let's say you have this big YouTube superstar, you know, we got our stars here, and he, he's got all of these human beings creating themselves off in the distance. What do they do next? But to sell nothing. And this becomes gimme money for relatively nothing. What is this? I don't know, I... I don't know. And what this does is really just financially exploit members. There are many, many other ways to exploit people. Um, for instance, take all of their sense of identity. But this can be done in a certain way of saying what's cool and what's not cool. All of that being in thought reform and a form of exploitation. Just honing in on, on that. Dean Pelton, I know how susceptible you are to advertising. Would you say I'm a level 7 susceptible? No, because why would I? Because that's Moon Man talk. Anywho, I wanted to get into the Wired video as well, but I wanted to s explain the layout of cult formation since 1991. So, here we are 30 years later. Oh my gosh. Let's check out what sociologists, Dr. No, I, I do not know how to pronounce her name. That is my apologies. Let us get into it, shall we? Who has experienced escaping from a cult? Well, at Ham's 007, many people have escaped from cults, and I'm happy to say that I'm one of them. Hi, I'm Dr. Yanya Lalich. I was once in a cult. Now I'm a sociologist who studies and writes about cults. Today, I'm here to answer your questions on Twitter. This is Cult Support. At Well Red Wife asks, be honest with me before I get sucked in. Is LuLaRoe a cult? Are we just buying our cute cult uniforms? LuLaRoe is quite a questionable retail organization at this point, and I don't think you want to wear that uniform. So, yeah. <laughs> I could straight up just like read for you guys the LuLaRoe paper that I wrote for, you know, two years ago. But LuLaRoe, does not make good clothes. Their clothes are as thin as like rice paper and they were, of course, I'm sure it's all in the past now, like left outside and got moldy and all of this stuff. But let's be honest here, guys. If there is an MLM sort of formation in a company, don't buy into it. Multi-level marketing, which is very common in the United States. It's not always a pyramid scheme, but it's at least a red flag if you find out you're working for an MLM company. Sorry, go ahead. Even if it isn't a cult, it is a very bad business practice in which if you are not anywhere near the top, you're going to be exploited. And if there's no thought reform or charismatic leader, it doesn't matter if it is a cult because you you got to get out of there. No, you got to get out of there. Get out of there. You got to get out of there. The reason why LuLaRoe was definitely exploiting its members is you have all of these amazing people getting crap for products for lack of better term, stinky, gross, unsellable, literally waste of your money products. And the part of the thought reform was that they were teaching these people just act, act it out, you know, play the role until it's, it's real. What's the normal way of saying it? 
it was very culty. And I didn't really notice it at first because I was so vulnerable when I joined and I was just so happy to have a community of women who supported me and thought I was awesome and and thought I was just as cool as I thought I was. Um, And so in the beginning, I sort of ignored it. You know, it was just like, yay, I have friends. This is awesome. Um, Anyways, you were told to go buy things, you know, expend your riches, spend every extra ounce of your paycheck on like riches and watches and cars and shoppings and then show that off to other people and say, look how successful I am. You should be a, a LuLaRoe salesman as well. You can be just as successful as me. When in fact, these people are going into debt just to have this facade of <sighs> happy Halloween, you guys. These are real human horrors. It's bad. Bad, bad, bad. I know. I know. You just, you just gotta get out of there. To get into the charismatic leader, I don't remember her name, but maybe I'll pop in a little video clip here or there just of either of her being super terrible or of her being a total complete liar, like recreating the story of how she created the company in the first place. Don't be a liar, fam. Half a semester's worth of research on these guys, and it was just fun, fun, fun. Why do cult leaders always have to be weirdo freaks that abuse their members? When will we see a cult leader who's really just a chill guy? Cult leaders are not going to be chill. Cult leaders are power-hungry individuals who are typically narcissists who believe that the world revolves around them. They aren't necessarily weirdo freaks. Some of them may look like a classy businessman. Remember the leader of Heaven's Gate? This is what he looked like when we saw him on those video clips the night before they all committed suicide. But this is not what Marshall Applewhite looked like when he was recruiting followers. He kind of had that professorial look or like your, your nice uncle. The cult leader might become a little demented, might start using too many drugs might start looking really weird, but they certainly don't start out that way because who would follow a weirdo? Okay, so this is a really good question. Why can't a cult leader be chill? Why can't we have good cults in the world? Why can't we have cults that do good things? Like, because that kind of goes against the definition of what a cult is, you guys. Like, technically that's just a, a religion or a, a compound, a commute whatever, or just like a really good group of friends or a charitable foundation that hasn't been corrupted. Same with everything else I've just said. When you have specific definitions and criteria that include the exploitation of members, having a good version of it would not technically be a version of it. A good cult is an oxymoron with, with that in mind. So like, even though pie in the sky dreams and goals here, I'd love to start my own group where I, you know, help change people's minds for the better. But of course, I have good ideas, I would say, like teaching people how to be open-minded in this whole, like, thought reform. But then what do you, it's not a cult anymore. It's just like how to be a good person seminars all, all the time. Anyways. <laughs> Any good person in my case would just go and do what everyone else does and start a YouTube channel where you can share your ideas about how to be a good person and what's a bad person, not this person, I'm not pointing at her, but like the Jim Jones characters and the, uh, the, the, just hit myself in the face, the Charles Manson characters in our world, like sure people don't look like that. Sure, they seemed chill at the time, but eventually, if you're exploited, it is a call and... Listen, 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 stop! You gotta get out of there, that's all! You gotta get out of there! You gotta get out of there! You gotta get out of there! I'm intrigued by the Heaven's Gate cult. Why the Nike shoes? They thought they were choosing life. In fact, let me read you from... This is one of their books. It's called Ruffles. 
Snacks for Thinkers. This book was given to me by Dick Jocelyn, who was one of the longtime members of the group. It's dated July 7th, 1979, and they all contributed little sayings to this book. Life is not a time to prepare for death. Death is a time to prepare for life. Life is a time for learning to live like the one who came to show us how. They believed that they were going to be picked up by a spaceship. Okay, so if you guys follow the channel here, the quotation from the, the Heaven's Gate group book, um, Anyways, if you guys follow the channel here, this is obviously the most anti-Nietzschean thought in existence where Nietzsche teaches the complete opposite. Life is the time to live, and to live toward your death is a waste of time, and death is basically nothing special, and it's everything else that's in between that's the most special. Freaking hashtag YOLO, basically. You only live once. You do not go out into space and find, you know, the one, the one true person. You do not spend your entire life trying to mimic the one true person. I just get so worked up about these sorts of things. I'm dying. My molars, they're moving. My teeth. Let's, let's see. How, how long we can continue on this. What defines a cult? Pretty sure you could call anything a cult. First of all, we have the leader who is charismatic and usually a narcissist. Second, we have what I call the transcendent belief system that gives you the answer to everything. Third are what I call systems of control. Things like what you should wear, what you should eat, who you can marry, how many kids you should have or shouldn't have. And fourth is the systems of influence. The cult will be playing on fear, love, grief, you know, whatever your emotions are to get you to comply and conform. So technically they didn't just add one, they sort of rewrote the list minus the first one. So the first one, charismatic leader. Second one, thought reform. Third, exploit members. Here we have two, the transcendent belief system. That's basically just thought reform. Systems of control. That's basically exploitation, but not explicitly exploitation. I.e. rules technically doesn't exploit someone unless it, you know, until it does. It's not a laughing matter, it's just like, I, I, I don't want to seem grumpy talking about all these grumpy things, so don't get me wrong here. Fourth thing, systems of influence that play on emotions to get you to conform. Their last two rules are basically a better articulated version of exploit members because you have very specific how to hows in doing this. System of control, system of influence. If either of these point too towards exploitation, you have a negative environment that you should... That's all we're asking. Get out. We're probably not gonna finish the video here. My mouth already hurts. I can't lie to you. I'm extremely apologetic, but I'd encourage you to go watch the whole thing by yourself. It's 20 whole freaking minutes long. We aren't going to be able to anyways. Another question that our doctor here goes on to answer later is how small can a cult be? Can it be just two people? And what our doctor here calls them are one-on-one -on -one cults. And a perfect example of this is gas lighting and i thought that this was mind-blowing because it does kind of fit all of the characteristics of what a cult is you have your charismatic leader you have thought reform you have exploitation and there you go a gaslighting filled relationship is technically a cult because you have one person justifying pretty much all of the actions of the other so if you know anyone like this, know that you are one step closer to that once-in-a-lifetime achievement award of K-1. 
getting someone out of a cult. That really is, in itself, three and four systems of controls and rules. You can't, you can't control someone, you can't influence them. This is taking away their autonomy and their personhood, their, their identity almost sometimes with specific enough rules and influence. The fact that they control what we wear, that's a cult tactic. The fact that they control what we do, who we spend time with, the, the amount of time that we're on Zoom calls and conferences, the sleep deprivation that you get. These are all cult tactics. These are all tiny little things when put together equal a gigantic cult. Um, the fact that LuLaRoe can never be at fault for anything and every single thing that goes wrong is someone else's fault and never LuLaRoe's fault. That is a huge cult tactic. So as we've all learned here today, happy Halloween. I almost said Merry Christmas, if you couldn't tell. Happy Halloween. Don't form cults. Don't join cults. Don't buy into MLMs. Don't support multi-level marketing or cults or cults that form small businesses or entrepreneurship or cults that excuse themselves as to be religion so they can hide behind huge tax walls. Don't support any of it unless it's a cult movie like slasher films, all of them, they're all great, like Sleepaway Camp, cult classic. Welcome to Sleepaway Camp. No one's getting exploited here. As I said in my last video, a ton of cult classics and slashers and Halloween amazingness is on Tubi. Get all them free with ads horror movies as you can because pretty much everywhere else don't have the good stuff like uh, Jason, Freddy, Michael, Angela. <laughs> um, we love our Angela, right? Okay, so I hope you guys have been sufficiently spooked out by this scary season. If you haven't, I would encourage you to go take a, a nice walk in the dark because it's scary in the dark. You don't know what's there, man. <laughs> no, bring a fresh, uh, the, bring a flashlight, of course, but just make sure you get fresh air that's crisp and dark and spooky and maybe put on some you know, the, the classic, classic scary movie jams. I have had so much fun talking with you guys about these spooky cult things. If you guys see any of these things, maybe in capitalism, you wouldn't be the only one. Like, there's so much exploitation that goes on in capitalism to you can generally tie it back to some charismatic leader and some thought reform because all of these encouraging Facebook groups exist to where you're just like, keep at it even though you're completely failing. Pretty much just referencing LuLaRoe here, but it can be stamped on as a case study for an example for everyone to see, man. Sometimes you just gotta grind that grind and not sell pants online. That rhymed, but I don't think it's very positive either way. I'm sorry if I'm breaking any hearts here. Either way, I, I think it's important to do what you want to do, not be exploited, do what you think you should do, not be influenced, and don't have a total idol or charismatic leader to your life. Be your own idol. Ubermensch. Nietzsche. Always going back to Nietzsche. Be your Ubermensch and you will have a great time. You're your own cult. Cult of one. And we've done it. We've solved it. <sighs> Nietzsche solved it. Like 200 years ago, basically. Uh, but yeah, Ubermensch. He totally solved it. Anyways, go read some Nietzsche and eat your dinner. And I really appreciate all of you guys commenting and liking and watching and continuing to watch and subscribe and you're so amazing. I'm so sorry I'm the most antisocial person who like takes a while to, to reply back. It's, it's the anxiety in me, I swear. Um, it's not you, it's me. I think it's, I just work too much. <laughs>
I'll try to make as much time as I can to reply to your comments and I hope to see you down in in the comments saying it's saying the one word so much thank you as always for watching i think i already said that jeez a happy freaking halloween best time of the year we should have more songs for it go write a song about it i love you bye